Mr. Speaker, I'm opposed to this bill, but let me begin by saying that this final amendment, if passed, if adopted, it will not kill the bill or send it back to committee. Instead, the bill as amended will immediately be voted upon for final passage. So we may strongly disagree on the bill in question, but surely no one in this chamber can disagree that in these hard times, working families in this country deserve a fair shake. Unfortunately, the underlying bill, as written, is fundamentally unfair. Mr. Speaker, a few weeks ago in my home state of Ohio, voters in an exercise of direct democracy voted to overwhelmingly repeal the infamous Senate Bill 5, which was a fundamentally unfair and extreme attack on workers, and a resounding victory for middle-class Ohioans. House will come to order. Gentlelady from Ohio may continue. In a resounding victory for the middle class, Ohioans, many Democrats and Republicans alike, went to the polls and soundly rejected the union-busting effort that would have unfairly silenced workers and stacked the deck against them. At a time when public officials across every level of government should be focused on getting Americans back to work, the underlying bill before us today like Ohio's recently repealed Senate Bill 5, would unfairly stack the deck against our workers and American jobs. But the good news, Mr. Speaker, is that it doesn't have to be that way. Right here, right now, we, Democrats and Republicans together, like so many voters in Ohio joined together, we can stand up for fairness and the middle class and pass this amendment. Our amendment would improve the bill in three very important ways. First, it would level the playing field between employees and corporate boards. It's only fair. When workers choose whether to organize a union, they're choosing who their representative will be in the workplace. When a board of directors takes a vote on whether to hire a CEO, they're choosing management's representative place. And I doubt that proponents of this bill would ever think of leaving a corporation voiceless or throw obstacles in the way of a corporate board of directors' ability to choose their next CEO. And yet that's exactly what this bill before us does to workers. It's not right. Workers shouldn't have to wait any longer than a corporate board of directors. And so this amendment levels things out by saying that nothing in this bill will impose any longer waiting period for workers to vote for a union than any state law imposes on a board of directors voting on a CEO. Second, this amendment will make sure that elections proceed legitimately and fairly. Everyone can agree that workers deserve to be fully informed. So this amendment requires that when a petition for an election is filed, the board must ensure an equal opportunity for workers to hear from all sides. Under current law, Mr. Speaker, only one party, the employer, can engage in what is called captive audience meetings. Only one party can force the voters to attend campaign speeches, rallies, and meetings, or be fired. Under this motion, under this amendment, the parties would agree to equal access to voters. It's only fair. No more captive audience meetings unless the parties agree, unless there is fair and equal access to voters so that all sides may be heard, so that workers can judge for themselves and make a fully informed choice when it comes time to vote. And finally, and importantly, this amendment discourages job outsourcing. With 9% unemployment in the country and our economy barely growing, the last thing we want to do is reward companies who ship jobs overseas. The underlying bill provides employers with a nasty weapon for tactical delay. It allows employers to drag out pre-election hearings indefinitely, preventing an election from ever happening. Employers can raise any issue at a time prior to the end of the hearing, even issues that have nothing to do with the conduct of the election or the question of whether there should be an election at all. 
Outsourcers should not have the benefit of a tactical delay to help ship jobs overseas. We should not allow it. So this amendment says if you have outsourced jobs or announced plans to outsource jobs in the past year, you don't get that privilege. You have to do what every party to a federal case must do. State your claims at the beginning of the hearing. We shouldn't extend privileges to outsourcers. I urge a vote yes on this final amendment to the bill. What purpose is the gentleman from